Another question that we've been getting from our customers is about the hypercharger network. Now this Diwali, we will launch more than 100 hyperchargers across the top 50 cities. And beyond that, the network will continue to expand in the future. If the humble two-wheeler was the start of India's EV revolution, the even humbler cell is going to be the heart of India's EV revolution. Now today, the world produces a thousand gigawatt hour of cells a year. Majority of this is in China, Europe and the US. By 2030, the world will need 10,000 gigawatt hours and India alone will need 2,000 gigawatt hour of cell capacity if we have to lead and electrify all transport. Today, guess how much we produce in India? Zero. Now, clearly for us to lead the EV world, we need to make our own cells and make them at this mind-boggling scale. We miss the semiconductor, solar, electronic and other manufacturing revolutions. But everyone around the world is just getting started with cells and EVs. And so if we invest now and at scale, we can do this and we can lead this. Also, this new era of renewable and electric technology is not a commodity like oil. There is no innovation possible to either reduce cost or to improve performance in commodities. And hence, as we all know, petrol prices only go up. Over the past decade, on the other hand, cost of cells have come down from $1,000 a kilowatt hour to $200 a kilowatt hour, while performance and safety has improved two to three times. And all this is due to the innovations in R&D that companies around the world have done. Yet everyone agrees that they're just scratching the surface of what these EV technologies can and will enable. You know, over the decade, we will see costs come down to $50 per kilowatt hour. Fast charging of batteries increase three to four times in speed. Range go up, safety improve with solid state technologies. And also new materials like sodium, sulfur, silicon, etc., which will enable more supply chain security for us in India. Now this technology and innovation game is just getting started. And we intend to be a global leader in this over the course of this decade. And that's why we've built this place I'm standing in. We call it the Ola Battery Innovation Center. A world-scale and world-class R&D facility spread across half a million square feet. We have the most advanced labs here across cell characterization using machines like scanning electron microscopes, X-ray diffractors, inductively coupled plasma and mass spectroscopes, and many, many more machines. We synthesize our own materials here in our wet and dry labs, where we have the most advanced mixers and furnaces to heat the materials to more than 2,000 degrees centigrade, and dry rooms to assemble and test the cells. We also have fireproof safety and performance test labs, where we test all thermal behaviors, which includes overcharge, nail penetration, altitude impact on cells, cycling performance, and also drop and crush tests. And the best highlight of this facility is the amazing 200 people who work here. Some of the smartest people in the world in this domain, most of whom are PhDs in their fields. Now I'm going to show you something very, very special. This is our dry lab in our BIC. And this is the driest, cleanest space here. You know, it's very, very extremely dry, and that's why you have to wear, wear the suit, because otherwise it'll suck moisture out of our skin. And what I'm going to show you now is something extremely close to my heart. This is our first lithium-ion cell. We've made it here, we are very excited about it, and soon we'll be producing it in our Giga factory. And this here is the battery module made from our own cells. Now, we are doing a lot of development and testing, comprehensive testing here in our uh, BIC on these cells. And by end of next year, we'll have them in our products.